Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to speak at this, uh, at this very nice conference. So I'm um, going to be talking about clinker and CO2 reduction, similar to the previous talk. Um, I'm going to be giving a little bit more technical details and uh, talking about the offering from uh, my company, GCP Applied Technologies, uh, in, in this area. So uh, first, just a little background about the company. Um, GCP Applied Technologies uh, does have a, a, a strong footprint in the area of cement additives. And uh, there's actually a lot of history going back. Um, actually, a company called Dewey and Almy in 1935 uh, was the forerunner of GCP. They introduced the first cement grinding aids back in 1935. Then um, about 20 years after that, they were acquired by Grace, which is the name that a lot of people do associate with us uh, still. And uh, while, while we were a division of, of Grace, uh, Grace Construction Products, we introduced a lot of the uh, really important um, strength enhancing additives for cement. Uh, such as the CBA line and the ESC line over the decades. Uh, then in 2016, uh, we spun off from Grace and became an independent company now known as GCP Applied Technologies, uh, but we're still innovating in the area of cement additives and our uh, latest offering, the cost reducers, which I'll be talking about today, which are specifically designed for clinker reduction, um, are actually being officially launched uh, later this year. So uh, just in case there may be some people who aren't completely familiar with uh, cement grinding aids and additives, um, these are, are chemicals which are added to the clinker at the time that it goes into the grinding mill or while it's in the grinding mill. Uh, you can see in the photograph there, there's a liquid going on onto the clinker. Um, the original and perhaps uh, the primary purpose is to improve the grinding efficiency. So that's the process efficiency. Uh, when you add these chemicals, uh, the amount of grinding, the length of time you have to grind the cement to get to a certain fineness is greatly reduced, which is a huge advantage. Um, so these are, these are liquids uh, that uh, typically have five to eight chemical components to them, and they're delivered to the cement plants, uh, either in big tanker trucks or, or in large totes. Um, dosages are typically a high PPM range, so maybe somewhere from uh, a few hundred PPM to a few thousand PPM. Uh, depending on the particular formulation and what the customer is, uh, is trying to accomplish with it. So the cost reducers are um, GCP's uh, newest family of cement additives. These are based on new chemicals uh, and new combinations of the components, um, as well as a new proprietary design process that we use to uh, tailor the properties for each particular customer that we're working with. Um, and as I mentioned, they are specifically developed to allow a significant reduction in clinker factor. And the way they do that is to really increase the strength of the cement that's remaining in the, uh, in the, the clinker that's remaining in the cement at that point. Um, and when you reduce clinker factor, as we all know by now, uh, that reduces the CO2 uh, emissions from the plant. And uh, so we can get um, strength increases and in CO2 reductions by uh, up to 10% or, or even more. Um, this particular example shown here, this was a uh, concrete example. This was a precast manufacturer that was uh, having problems with their early strengths when curing in the winter. That's why the curing is at 10 degrees C here. So in this example, the only difference is that the cement was manufactured with one of our cost reducer products and uh, everything else was, was kept the same. And we were able to get a 25% uh, increase in uh, one day strength of the concrete uh, for the producer. So they were quite, quite pleased with that. But it's an example of the kind of uh, step change in strength development that we can get with these products. So looking at kind of a, a full list of the, uh, uh, the attributes of these, uh, you'll see a lot of the process things are, are things that um, can be offered by uh, many different uh, traditional grinding aids, you know, reduced coating and pack set increased mill output and narrower cement particle size distribution. Those are things that you get with, with, with most traditional grinding aids as well. Uh, the big difference with the cost reducer line are the uh, more significant increases in uh, early and late strength that you see there. And the large ranges um, in, in, the, in the values is because all cements are different and also because we can tailor these, these things for more early strength or more late strength, depending on the particular needs of, of the customer. Uh, you can also see that, that we can either reduce or extend set times. That's again, we, we, can, we can adjust the formulation uh, depending on what the customer is looking for in terms of adjusting uh, the setting time. But uh, again, um, key feature of this and what's, what's so important about this today is that when you can 
increase these strengths, that translates directly into CO2 reduction. And I'll show uh, a detailed example about how that happens here on the next slide. So, so how can we go from strength reduction to, to lower clinker to, to CO2? Uh, this is a laboratory experiment uh, that, that we did. Uh, we took a customer uh, industrial cement, um, which was made with uh, a small 4% uh, amount of limestone. So this is a type one cement they're, they're just making with limestone. And we separately ground in our laboratory some limestone to uh, a typical fineness that would be found in a cement. And then we just blended it in at various, um, at various levels. So what you're seeing on the graph is the two-day strength uh, of these mixes uh, in mortar uh, as a function of the total limestone replacement as we blended in more and more limestone. And so what you see, of course, is that the strength declines as you add more and more limestone. Um, you know, compared to the to clinker, limestone really has uh, very little strength capacity um, to it. Uh, it. It really doesn't doesn't do a lot of strength development. So so when you're diluting your clinker, you're losing strength. Um, and so what we do is we add a, a strength enhancing chemical formulation. Um, and in this case, with the orange, you can see that each mix that's made with the strength enhancing chemical. Uh, has something like two to three megapascals of, of strength gain over, over the uh, one without it that was made with just a traditional grinding aid that was on the cement already. And so in this case, we imagine that the customer has a, a target strength of, of 32 megapascals at two days. So we're just about reaching that in the blank. And then as we start adding more and more limestone, uh, we go below that, but then the strength enhancer brings it back. So where the target intersects the orange line there, that's how much limestone the customer could add in this example uh, and still reach their target strength. So that's about 11%. So in this, in this example from a laboratory, the strength enhancer uh, would allow the, the, the customer to add an additional 7% of limestone while maintaining their strength. That would, uh, that would correspond to 7% um, you know, clinker reduction and uh, significant savings in CO2 emissions for that plant. So um, I'm gonna show some examples uh, of, of isothermal calorimetry, and I just wanna sort of uh, uh, introduce that uh, technique a little bit. So the uh, cement hydration process uh, has chemical reactions that give off heat. So if you measure how much heat is coming off the cement, the rate of heat output, you're essentially measuring the, the reaction rate or the hardening rate of the cement. Um, and so what you get over the first day, first 24 hours here, um, is a plot with a characteristic shape like that. And so we can see the, the, the main hydration peak associated with the silicate minerals reacting, um, an illuminate shoulder associated with the illuminate minerals um, hydrating. And this is also sensitive to the sulfate level of the cement. Um, when, when this first acceleration period happens, we can associate that with changes in set time if that's moving around. And we can also measure the total area by integrating this curve. And that's gonna uh, give us an idea of the, uh, the one day strength because the more heat you evolve by one day, the higher the strength. So um, how do uh, our additives actually affect strength? So um, it's worth talking about this a little bit. You know, we add these chemicals in, in these fairly small doses and they end up having um, you know, dramatic effects on strength. How is that happening? There's a few different mechanisms which are listed on this slide. Um, you know, probably the simplest one is just simply to increase the degree of hydration. So if at a given age, you've made the cement react more because it's reacting faster, then you're going to see um, a greater strength development at that point. And this is a lot of the ways that um, you, can, you can increase early strength. For example, an accelerator will tend to increase your early strength just because it's made the cement react more. Um, you'll generally give those gains back at later ages if you're simply using an accelerator. Um, you know, I think a more important way to increase strength is to change the actual morphology of the hydration products that are formed. Uh, cement hydration, it's very complex. There's many components in there. There's many hydration products that form. And in general, if you get something that has a very fine structure with interlocking grains, as is shown in the small photo on the left, you're going to get good strength development. Whereas when you're forming uh, minerals that have a larger kind of a blocky shape there that are just filling space but are not really binding to each other, you're not going to get as much strength development for, for the same amount of clinker that's been consumed. So if you can change your your morphology to look more like the left than on the right, you're going to get better strength development. Another issue is the distribution of the hydration products. So if you look at the microstructure, if you're forming hydration products as, as sort of a dense layer directly on top of the cement minerals, um, that's not going to optimize your strength development. Um, it's going to be better to have products that form out into the pore space 
and rather efficiently fill up the pore space of the cement, which is the, uh, the mixed water that's added uh, originally. And uh, some additives that, that we use actually have the ability to change that kind of distribution. So in terms of the types of strength enhancing chemicals that can be added, I think the most common and perhaps the most effective family are the amines. Uh, these are uh, chemicals known as tertiary alkanolamines. Um, and they are widely used in strength enhancing formulations, <clears throat> many of which were introduced by uh, GCP uh, many, many years ago. Some common examples are TEA, DIEPA, and TIPA, and there are many others in this family that, uh, that can be used. Um, so one of the nice things about these is that, they, is that some of them tend to enhance the strength at early ages, other ones tend to enhance it at late ages. So working with these amines, if you have the right expertise, you can actually tailor the the strength development at different ages to suit what the customer's needs are. Um, in general, they work by increasing the hydration of the aluminate and the ferrite minerals uh, in the cement, which sometimes tend to not be consumed completely, which, uh, which leaves room for, for additional strength development that can be unlocked. Um, one of the features of these amines is that when, when they go into the solution in the beginning, instead, instead of being bound into the hydration products over time, a lot of them tend to remain in the solution as shown in the plot here. So, in this case, uh, after one, one week of hydration um, for the red and the blue, uh, it means here actually at least 50% of what was added originally is actually still present in the pore solution and is therefore uh, still able to, uh, to activate the hydration. Two other uh, categories of chemicals that, that can give you strength uh, enhancement are actually uh, accelerators and retarders. Now these are of course um, added primarily to change the set time. Uh, accelerators will shorten the set and retarders will extend the set time as indicated uh, you know, directionally in this diagram here. Uh, accelerators are, are often salt, such as calcium chloride, sodium chloride. Uh, they, they increase the early hydration rate. So uh, a very simple way to increase your early strength is to just use an accelerator. Um, these can actually, actually tend not to increase late strength. And if you use a lot, you can actually hurt your late strength. So that's uh, um, not always an ideal way to go about it. Um, retarders, which are often uh, sugars such as uh, sucrose and sodium gluconate, slow the early reaction rate. Um, they actually do this by slowing down the rate at which the uh, hydration products can nucleate and form uh, at early times. Um, so that will extend your set time. It'll take longer for the reaction to get going. Um, this can actually give you some strength enhancement at all ages. And this tends to work by uh, changing the distribution of the hydration products in, in a favorable way. Uh, these strength changes, if you're just using a retarder, are not going to be dramatic, but they can be useful. So these are some of the things that we can work with when we're uh, putting together a particular formulation for a customer. So let's now look at um, some cement responses to the new cost reducer formulation. So I'm, I'm showing you results here for calorimetry, obviously on two North American cements. Uh, Cement A has 12% limestone and a relatively high C3A content. Cement B has 5% limestone and a, and a relatively low C3A content. And what we're seeing in additional to, to, uh, to the blank would be a uh, sort of a traditional quality improver offering shown in green. And uh, the blue and the red are two of our, our new cost reducer uh, chemical formulations. So looking at the plot on the left, you can see that there's a real dramatic change in the uh, shape of the curve there. We're getting a lot more heat and we very strongly enhanced this secondary peak here with the new cost reducer offering. So what you would expect here is certainly by 24 hours, there should be um, a significant early strength enhancement from, from these chemicals. Um, we, might, we might say that uh, cost reducer one would do, uh, sorry, cost reducer two would do a little bit better than one based on, on the uh, area under these peaks. Uh, when we look at cement B, we actually see a very a different response. We're not seeing that big peak enhancement of the, of the uh, secondary peak here, but we are seeing uh, a steady increase in the rate over time, over the whole day that looks to extend beyond one day. So from this one, we might expect that the cost producers are gonna give us good all ages uh, strength enhancement. Um, so these are not things that are um, very quantitative in terms of, uh, you know, what's my strength enhancement gonna be from looking at the calorimetry, but we can get some good clues about what's working um, and what's not. So we actually then, uh, this is, you know, laboratory experiment. We actually did uh, EN uh, mortar testing to see what the strength gain would be for all of these um, here. So we have uh, in these tables here, 
This is the increase in strength uh, here at one days, two days, and 28 days of the samples with the uh, additives as compared to the blanks. So these are the strength deltas. So the traditional quality improver is giving us um, you know, two to three megapascals <clears throat> of strength enhancement over time, but the cost reducer ones are giving significantly more to that. We're getting maybe uh, four uh, or so with generation one and uh, six to seven with the generation two. So that's a significant enhancement. Um, and that's the kind of thing that really lets a customer um, add, uh, uh, reduce their clinker content, add more limestone or pozzolan or whatever they want to add. Uh, moving to cement B, um, we again see the uh, cost reducers are uh, outperforming the traditional quality improver. And I particularly wanted to point uh, the generation two one is really enhancing the 28 day strength very strongly. We're getting almost 12 megapascals of strength enhancement, whereas the traditional uh, offering here is essentially not giving any late strength. It's only giving a little bit of early strength. So there'd be a really huge differentiation for Cement B with the, uh, with the new cost reducer offerings. Okay, so that, that's a kind of a laboratory study. Let's move to um, one industrial case study here um, using, using the cost reducers. So uh, this is a customer that wanted to replace their existing type one cement with a SEM2 offering containing a natural pozzolan that they had available. Um, you know, as is typical, what they'd like to do is they'd like to maintain the same performance uh, as the type one cement while adding this pozzolan. So essentially they wanna decrease their clinker content, which is gonna reduce their CO2 footprint, but they don't wanna give up any, any performance. And in particular, their technical target was they wanted to increase their late strengths above what they were getting with their current additive. So the way we did this was kind of a two-step process. The first one was to say, let's say, okay, we're not going to add any pozzolan yet. Let's see how much we can increase the strength of your, uh, of your type one cement with, with a new additive. So we formulated a cost reducer additive for them, and we just used it on, on their SEM1. And as you can see, uh, for late strength, we were able to offer them an additional uh, six megapascals of strength of their, of their SEM1. Uh, over, over the uh, reference quality improver that they were using. So that's a promising first step. So the second step then was to move to their, um, their SEM2 composition, which in this case involved adding 8% of the natural pozzolan, lowering the clinker content by 8%. <clears throat> uh, we then conducted a, a long-term trial with them using the cost reducer at uh, about 900 to 1,000 ppm dosage. And you can see here, that we are maintaining the same strengths at both two days and 28 days uh, with the pozzolanic cement as they uh, are maintaining with the traditional additive with, with their SEM1. So, so the, the addition of the more powerful strength enhancer is allowing them to add that 8% pozzolan and get that 8% clinker reduction. So uh, we were able to then show the customer these potential savings here. Um, so assuming the 8% clinker replacement, that corresponds to CO2 emission reductions of 60 kilograms per ton of cement. And uh, for the production rates of this particular customer, that corresponded to uh, 30,000 tons a year of CO2 reduction, which is pretty significant. And uh, at the time of uh, this uh, conversation, the CO2 price was about 50 euros per ton, and that corresponded to uh, 1.7 million euros per year in net savings. Uh, uh, for the customer, taking into account both process uh, improvements and the, the cost of the CO2. So uh, with that, uh, Thomas, I think I will uh, turn it back to you and thank you for the opportunity to speak.